Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Carry people. I do apologize that I've been away for a little bit. Um, had to look after the granddaughter for the last week. <clears throat> and man, oh man, four years old, doesn't leave a whole lot of time for Papa to be doing some YouTube, uh, YouTubing. And uh, I tried to get her to do a little Everyday Carry with her backpack, but there was no way that uh, four-year-old Emmy was sitting to have it. So just a really quick uh, video here. I want to go over to one of my all-time favorite knives, which is the Spyderco Shaman. Uh, I ended up doing a little bit of stuff to this. Now, I do apologize that I have such a hard time uh, doing customizing knife videos because I never could really sit down and do them all at once. So I'm just going to kind of go over what I did to this knife. And uh, and you know what? Muse. Uh, and maybe you guys could uh, make up your mind whether you want to do some of these uh, these uh, customizing to the Shaman 2 as well. All right. So <clears throat> one of the biggest faults... I found with the Shaman right off the bat was the fact that when you actually closed it, there was a little bit of a nub that was right here. And um, when you close it, it would protrude into your uh, lock surface here. Oh, excuse me, I've got a little bit of a wife's hair there. Um, it would protrude inside the uh, the compression lock and it would tip the, the, hit the tip of my finger and it would drive me crazy. I absolutely hated it. That was the only knock I think I really had on this beautiful, beautiful uh, blade. So what I ended up doing is ended up just taking it, uh, taping the blade up, taping this up. Um, oh, and this ver what actually what I ended up doing is I ended up knocking off all the scales, taking it completely apart, and I just taped up the blade except for this little area, and I just took uh, a diamond file and I started to file down until I felt that it was right. Um, now that was the wrong way to do it. What I should have ended up doing is I should have closed the blade and I should have marked along the side, colored in exactly what I wanted gone with either say this black marker or a scribe, but I didn't. I just kind of eyeballed it and I ended up having to go back and redo it. So that's one thing. If you're gonna do your own little nub delete there, I would suggest closing it and marking off where you want it to be off. So. When I had the, the thing completely apart, I took the actual scales and inside the scales, another thing I did is I this flashing here on all the inside of the scales was very, very sharp. So if you buy this knife online, when you get it, I think you're gonna find that it's a little bit sharp. And if you sometimes, if the fat of your fingers kind of gets inside there, it can feel almost like it's gonna cut. Maybe it's not that bad, but it's enough that it's a tiny bit uncomfortable. So I just, once the scales are off, I just took some sandpaper and I just went along the inside of the flash and I sanded that down. Now, the other thing that I will let you know is on the DLC coated blades, they are not polished by the pivot or the detent ball path. It's not polished whatsoever. It looks like it's just a straight old, uh, DLC coating and I did do a little bit of research and found out that on the regular bladed ones It looks like the detent ball path is and some of the um, pivot has been polished This one was not so what I ended up doing is I just took my Dremel and I took some uh, flits with just a little bit of a um, uh, I'm not sure what it is just a little bit of a, a polishing pad in the flits and I polish the pivot area and I polish the detent path and it does make quite a bit of difference. This is now drop shut. Now it was kind of drop shut before, but it, it almost had a tiny bit of a uh, grit to it, but now it is so smooth. It's incredible. Um, the flip factor on this knife has gone through the roof, roof once I remove that, uh, those nubs. Now, so not only did I polish up the detent ball as well as the uh, pivot path, once I put this knife together and I found that I still wasn't finished, I just took my Dremel and I gave it a little bit more of a, just a little bit down, and I almost like I'm losing the first little bit of a jimping there too as well. And um, I think it looks really, really quite nice. Um, so once I took that, I also gave myself a little bit of a sharpening trail here too as well. And then I took it and I put it inside a vise with it all taped up and I took a piece of uh, wood with some 80 grit sandpaper on it and then I ended up working down this a little bit here too as well because it is got a little bit of a palm swell there and if your hands don't fit it perfectly sometimes some people may feel it a little bit uncomfortable. I happen to really, really like it, but I saw that a lot of people really like that skinny too as well. And so with it just having the blade in the vise, this taking it down just ever so slightly, I could test it out. 
and I found that as much as I liked it, when it was brand new out of the box, I liked it even more with that just down uh, such a smidge. And I mean, really, I took off maybe a millimeter and a half, two millimeters. And um, once I was finished with the 80 grit sandpaper, it was a little bit of a rough finish. I just took some 600 grit sandpaper, kind of gave it a little bit more of a finish there. That smoothed it out quite a bit. And then I took some flitz polish again and just a regular old cloth rag and I polished this bottom a little bit too as well, and it feels wonderful. Now, this knife here was probably an eight out of a 10 before these mods. I now think this is a 10 out of a 10. The flick factor on this knife is absolutely through the roof, and I would recommend if you've got a little bit of time, you don't even need to be super mechanically inclined or even have a Dremel. If you've got a good file, I'm sure that you can file this down it, which, which I did. I happen to use diamond files, but I think some hardened files will work just as well. It might take a little bit longer because, you know what, this is a hardened material. But if you've got a diamond file by hand, by all means, I think it'll it'll go no problems. So, appreciate you guys stopping by. <clears throat> just as, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I, I, and I appreciate you guys stopping by. And I appreciate you just having a look at this. Um, would I recommend doing it? Absolutely. I think if you're a shaman guy and you're a guy who loves the compression lock and you like to flick, taking this nub delete down just does an absolutely wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, increases the flick factor by two. And it takes this from a nine knife to a 10 knife flat out. Love it. Absolutely. And just one little thing on a side note. <sighs> I am so damn OCD when it comes to these knives. I ended up just touching this edge ever so slightly with this little pink stone on my Dremel after I was kind of smoothing this out. And it just put a tiny bit of a flat spot. I, I mean, very, very tiny. I can just feel it with my fingernail. I am going to now spend 45 minutes resharpening this entire blade just to get rid of that spot because damn it, it drives me crazy. But all right, thanks for stopping by. If you like what you saw, please, please subscribe. Appreciate it so much. Now, hey, we are not out of the woods yet um, with this, uh, what's going on out there. So please, please stay safe out there. Uh, keep your stick on the ice, the shiny setup. This is the Big Canucker saying adios.